Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to the 83rd edition of Legendary Tournament in Vegan Z. Uh, Tata still 2021. I would like to introduce you the players. So we have a Pantala Hare Krishna, Maxim Vasil Lagraf, uh, Andrei Yesipienko, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Nils Grandelius, Alexandre Donchenko, uh, Fabiano Caruana, Jordan Van Forest, Anish Giri, uh, Arian Tari from Norway, Radosław Wojtaszek from Poland, and David Anton. Magnus Carlsen and Alireza Firuzia. And in the first round already we have the game everybody was waiting for where Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces is going to play uh, against Alireza Firuzia. And I would like to show you this game from the Black's perspective and it's very, very interesting. So without further ado, let's just see what happened uh, on the board. Uh, we have Magnus Carlsen open with the d4. Of course, everybody was wondering he gonna go for e4, maybe c4, maybe not f3, uh, but d4 by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, uh, Alireza Firuzia open with the knight f6. We have c4, e6. We have knight f3 uh, and now d5. So queen's gambit declined. Knight c3, the main line by um, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and here Alireza Firuzia has a wide variety of the of the options. He can go for the, for the c6, semi-slav defense. He can go for the Ragozin, a bishop b4. Uh, he can go for d takes on c4, Vienna variation, semi tarash c5, uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, finally, he can go simply for bishop e7 main line uh, and Magnus Carlsen uh, usually go for the bishop f4, which is a uh, very interesting. The main line is bishop g5, but bishop f4, uh, he can uh, actually get out of the, of the opening preparation. He just proved that one year ago uh, in the in the 2020 Tata Steel tournament, uh, so bishop f4 could be played. So instead, Alireza Firuzia, instead of playing bishop e7 uh, or other variation, he went for knight b to d7, the barman variation. And now the things are slightly different. If uh, Magnus goes for bishop f4, which is um, of course playable, he has to accept that after d takes on c4 uh, and e3, uh, uh, he have to meet knight d5, attacking this knight and attacking this bishop. And now the knight cannot be simply taken because this pawn uh, gonna defend the pawn on c4 and black gonna win the pawn uh, and also get a lot of pawns on the, on the queen side. Five pawns against um, like three pawns here. So pretty dangerous position. Um, so probably something like bishop c4 getting back the pawn and after knight f4, white have to accept to to have this position. White have a quite a development. Three pieces developed, uh, ready to castle, and these two pawns having this grip on the, on the e5 square. Uh, so black has the pair of bishops, but it's not that easy actually to play. So that is uh, one of the options. Also, Alireza could go for something more crazy, uh, sacrifice the pawn on b5. Uh, and after knight b5, then bishop b4, the knight have to uh, retreat, uh, and then this knight can jump uh, uh, but the knight is pinned so this is quite the difference here uh, something like a3 have to be played and after knight c3 what white have to do is bring the queen to one of these two squares. So for example, queen d2, and after knight d5, uh, this bishop is actually defended by the knight. So a takes on b4, and after knight f4, uh, we're gonna have similar position, but the pawn structure is completely shattered and, and, and crazy. So uh, this is possible. So that would probably go out of the control. Uh, Magnus Carlsen wanted to go for pretty standard stuff. Bishop g5, usually what we play here, first First, we get um, exchange the pawns here. So this is uh, the typical stuff. We're gonna have the Carlsbad uh, formation of the pawns where uh, black gonna have the open, semi-open E file and white gonna have a semi-open C file uh, and the minority attack on the position um, of, the, of the queen side uh, of the black pieces. So 
this this was of course possible this is how uh, most of the players play that but magnus went for bishop g5 immediately which is not the uh, the mistake however uh, it uh, gives black the opportunity again to deviate to couple of um, others uh, positions uh, of course um, uh, ali reza firuzia has a choice again he can go for the for the c6 pretty standard go to the all the semislav um, uh, structures uh, he can go for bishop e7 all of this is well known bishop b4 like a kind of uh, ragozin uh, and so on however we have h6 uh, and now bishop h4 and only now bishop e7 so c takes on d5 and now uh the knight can take on d5 this is the difference and now this bishop is attacked twice uh so we have bishop e7 and now the main idea actually uh we have in the database i think 10 or 12 games and all of them the games uh, ends with the queen e7 uh, knight e7 is not um, not played um, uh, in the studio some of the commentators say that probably knight e7 would be completely safe but for some reason nobody plays that and um, the queen e7 was played by alireza firuzia uh, and now we have immediately e4 by magnus carlsen so something has to be done with this knight the knight is in the center we have knight c3 b takes on c3 and we have very typical structure pawn structure uh, in the center very massive pawn center uh, of course c5 is coming on some point um, but first Alireza the castle and after bishop d3 only then we have c5 uh, and now Magnus of course um, have to castle first and after exchanging uh, we have this position which was reached only once uh, if you check uh, we have only once but very very similar positions uh, are, were played plenty of times uh, in the Tarash defense uh, very similar also in the greenfield uh, you know this maneuver where the knight takes on the on the c3 and then c5 exchanging in the center i show you plenty of times um, on the on my channel uh, if you want to know more about that just check greenfield and there are very very similar positions uh, so b6 was played and now we have only one game in the database where a very logical rook c1 was played now what is the idea here the idea is uh, if black continues um, this bishop b7 this is a very big problem for black because the rook gonna jump to the c7 with tempo with the attack on the uh, on the bishop and if the bishop is actually defended uh, then black gonna lose the game because gonna lose the this knight the knight can can jump here the bishop can also come to the b5 uh, and just win uh, this knight as the knight is of course pinned to the queen so that would be the problem so this is why in this position knight f6 has to be played prepare the attack on the on the e4 of course is the pawn if the pawn is pushed uh then we're gonna have very nice outpost on d5 so usually something like queen e2 can be played just to overprotect the the pawn on e4 and then connect the rooks and continue the game so this is well-known theory however uh, magnus carlsen played the kind of a novelty here and he played a4 and now situation on the clock magnus carlsen spent only 10 minutes so he still has a uh, one hour and 30 minutes on his clock uh, and alireza firuzia from the other hand uh, have 45 minutes on his clock so he spent a uh, 60 percent of his time already so it looks like he prepared something against magnus but it seems also like magnus knew the theory uh, much better than alireza firuzia uh, we have bishop b7 now and now magnus immediately goes for um, a5 now the reason is that this position very similar position very very similar structures were uh, played by black pieces by magnus carlsen himself the difference is uh, he always had the queen on d8 for example um quite well known a game against topov where um, he actually in in the very similar position played something like a6 uh, but with the queen on d8 the queen could um, recapture on b6 and with this pawn uh, actually uh, he had the huge chances uh, for for 
for win. So uh, that, that he knows he's familiar with uh, with this position, uh, with these pawn structures uh, as, as he played. A6 now doesn't work because after A takes on B6, the queen cannot take on the on the B6. And if the knight takes, uh, this knight is not really great placed here. Uh, for example, rook B1, and this knight has to go to the uh, to the C8. That position is completely passive. You cannot just defend the knight because you're gonna lose one of these pieces. Okay, so uh, A6 is not really possible. Ali Reza Firuzia just don't care. Uh, said, okay, uh, I'm gonna eliminate your your pawn. So we have B takes on A5, Rook A5, and now Knight F6 attacking this pawn uh, already twice. So this is the uh, quite a weakness. Of course, if the pawn is pushed, uh, this knight gonna find the the way on the D5. So this is why we have rook e1 defending and now rook f to d8. Now putting the pressure on the central pawn, uh, we have queen a1 now uh, attacking the pawn on a7 twice, but still keeping an eye on the, on the d4, which is of course overprotected uh, together with the knight. We have queen c7 and now uh, you would ask, okay, uh, Magnus can simply win the pawn. Uh, actually, he cannot win the pawn. He gonna just exchange the pawns and also will be forced to exchange uh, a lot of pieces. Uh, because after rook a7, rook a7, queen a7, uh, we gonna have rook a8. And now the queen is almost trapped, have to be moved to c5. And after exchanging, uh, simply rook c8 wins back the pawn. And uh, the queens and the one pair of rooks are are already exchanged this pawn of course cannot be defended if it's defended then this pawn gonna um, gonna fall uh, if this pawn is moved uh, then this pawn gonna be attacked twice and cannot be defended if it's moved then of course it's gonna be taken as well so uh, taking this pawn doesn't uh, simply doesn't work uh, this is why Magnus went for h3 now we have a6 uh, and now rook c5 harassing the, the queen queen f4 very aggressive move by Ali Reza Rusia, very nice spot for the queen. Now this pawn is attacked three times. Now how to defend? Uh, of course, queen b1 is possible. Uh, it's quite tricky because now this bishop is under attack, uh, so have to be defended. Uh, and probably something like queen c2 uh, avoiding to um, you know some of the discoveries with the attack on the queen uh, but the black also can force to exchange some of the rooks this rook has to be exchanged uh, and the queen yes can land on b1 but white actually achieved completely nothing um, don't didn't improve um, the position at all and also exchange the rook so that's probably not what magnus carlsen wants but he found another very interesting move rook e5 and look at this uh, this pawn is defended is defended of course three times already uh, but the thing is look at the queen the queen is trapped the queen has no moves uh, completely. All the squares around the queen are controlled by the white pieces, uh, but the queen is not uh, under attack. But what could happen if black uh, play completely careless, like something like king h8? Uh, of course, nobody would play that move, but I'm just showing you what could happen. Um, then g3 is an idea here. And after queen f3, we're gonna have rook e3 and the queen is trapped, uh, have to be exchanged uh, for the rook. Uh, so white gonna have the better position with the queen for the rook uh, and the knight so uh, definitely better for white still this massive center uh, can be very very um, dangerous so this is why we have knight d7 now knight d7 not only attacking the rook uh, but also in case of the g3 uh, what can happen is after queen f3 and rook e3, uh, this rook can be taken and also the knight is already defending the, the queen. Uh, so white doesn't have a time to take the, the, the knight, of course. Uh, so after taking, the problem is, uh, count the pieces, uh, we're gonna have extra knight uh, and the queen is for two rooks. So black is completely winning in this position. So g3 just doesn't work in this position. Position. This is why we have rook a5 by Magnus Carlsen and now knight f6. So again, Ali Reza Firuzia said, okay, we can just repeat the position, a threefold repetition. Uh, let's just sign the draw uh, and that's all. And here Magnus Carlsen in the interview, actually, he said that he started to gamble from this move and he played d5 and he know that there is no um, going back from this position. It's a winning or losing. That's going to be extremely, extremely sharp. 
sharp. Uh, he sacrificed the pawn because after e takes on d5, now we have e5, so the knight is under attack, and now instead of moving the knight somewhere back, uh, Alireza Firuzia went for the most aggressive move. Knight e4, and um, the knight of course is defended three times together with the bishop and the queen and the pawn, uh, and now centralizing move. Queen d4 by Magnus Carlsen, we have rook d to c8, now threatening to exchange the rooks as this queen is really really well placed uh, so we have rook a to a1 defending so the exchange is not possible anymore uh, and now we have a5 and it seems like alireza just want to exchange the the light squares bishops however after rook a to b1 with the attack on the bishop, uh, Alireza could go a very simple move, bishop a6, forcing to exchange these bishops. Uh, he didn't want to do that. Uh, of course, the bishop cannot be moved because uh, the c2 is, is controlled, so have to be exchanged. Uh, so, for example, bishop a6, rook a6, uh, and now after queen d5, uh, then Alireza could just force to exchange the knights as well. Uh, knight g5 and where to move the knight. The knight would have to just retreat somewhere to a very, very passive position. Uh, this knight, if it's not exchanged, can, can go to the, to the e6 square. Very nice classical blocking piece, so uh, this pawn would not be da dangerous anymore, uh, and this pawn uh, would be dangerous. This is past pawn uh, would be definitely very dangerous. So probably after exchanging, this is this is probably completely draw position, uh, as we have only the heavy pieces on the on the board. So that was the chance for Alireza Firuzia to draw. However, uh, he went for bishop c6. Uh, so what he wants to do is still keep this bishop on this diagonal uh, maybe to support the pawn uh, with the move on a4 for example uh, or maybe also um, can bring it here uh, or whatever plan Alireza had uh, but now Magnus Carlsen surprise and he sacrificed yet another pawn so a6 so the bishop cannot come to d7 now um, but of course we have f takes on e6 connecting these pawns uh, but why to even play this move e6 e6 because Magnus Carlsen wanted to make the space for the knight um, the pawn was on the on the e5 and now there is no pawn uh, so the knight can jump there very active position uh, of course this attack is not possible because the queen is defending so first magnus centralized the queen just to defend uh, to e4 and now he just improved the position of his knight what a chance uh, this is just amazing we have queen f6 by uh, Alireza Firuzia, and now again Magnus uh, could just simplify the position a bit here, uh, play something like bishop e4, win the pawn, but of course he doesn't want to just win the pawn, uh, because in this position, yes, he could win um, the, the pawn, but, but what next? Uh, that's probably gonna be draw. Black even have a slightly better position with one extra pawn, uh, but of course it's a very, very weak pawn, probably would fall. Uh, so Magnus probably would defend that. But this is just, you know, boring chess. Uh, so he didn't want to play that. He kicked the knight, uh, and then the knight uh, just go back to the, to the g5, defending e6 pawn. Uh, we have rook b6 now attacking the bishop twice, so very simple threat, the bishop has to go uh, somewhere, of course cannot go to d7, because now the knight is controlling d7, not pawn anymore, but now the knight controlling there, so bishop e8, and now we have queen e3, very sneaky move, uh, and it looks like it doesn't make any sense, uh, it looks like Magnus saying, uh, okay, um, I have nothing here, uh, so just go for what you want to go. Uh, and here Alireza actually had the very, very nice chances to win. Uh, the key move here for him is h5. Now h5 uh, looks like very strange move because now the knight is not overprotected anymore. But this pawn uh, would actually defend g4. Now, why this is important? The knight cannot jump over there. Uh, and after this move, uh, Alireza can just try to uh, push this pawn. Uh, 
What could happen? Probably something like h4. This knight can, can retreat, for example, to h7, but can retreat also to e4, which is very interesting. Uh, it's actually blocking uh, the line of sight and defenders uh, of, this, of this knight. So after, for example, f takes on e4, queen e5, uh, we would have simply e takes on d5, then exchanging the queens, and after e takes on d5, Rook b7. Yes, white have some threats, but only on paper on the seven rank, uh, because bishop c6 solve all the problems. Because look at this, the bishop controls all of the squares, the rook also controls, so this rook has to move somewhere. Uh, if uh, moves, of course, to, to, to e7, uh, that is not possible to double on the seven rank, and black also have these two passed pawns, which can be supported by the, by the black rooks. So black stands uh, better probably would win that game. So h5 was a very important preventing move, but Alireza went for a4 immediately without any preparation. So Magnus um, just jumped to g4 with tempo, with the attack on the queen. We have queen d8 and now rook e6. So after sacrificing two pawns, Magnus sacrificed also the exchange. And not much choice here, of course. We have knight e6 and now queen e6. And you can, in this position, pause the video and find the only defensive line for Alireza Firuzia. The position is extremely complicated. It looks like very simple, but it's extremely complicated. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So there is only one defensive move for Alireza and it's king h8. Now, uh, what are the options for white? First, the checkmate, this 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 way of checkmating, and another option is uh, the knight h6. Um, so there are two options, attacking options, of course, uh, for white. So let's check both of them. Queen f5 doesn't work because what black have to play here, uh, and it's Again, this is only one way to draw. You can try to find again, and this is queen b6. This is the only way. Now, what's the idea? The idea is that after the king, uh, the queen actually controls g6. So, of course, uh, we don't move the, the king because we would open this diagonal, but rather we give back the material. We just give back this bishop. If the queen is moved, for example, uh, to the d5, then we, of course, gonna exchange the bishops and there is uh, no more threat. We have extra rook, so that's enough to win the game. So white are forced actually to exchange the queens. Yes, winning the piece, uh, but exchanging the queens. And this is slightly better for black. This end game uh, with two passed pawns and the rooks uh, behind. Um, it's like this rook can, for example, um, follow uh, this rook can support the, the a pawn uh, also there is another option once the 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 pawn is 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 on d2 i uh, can come to c1 and and support the the promotion so there are a lot of options here for example start from a3 and so on so queen f5 doesn't work, but only if black find the, this queen b6 uh, and the, the the bishop g6 maneuver so that's one thing uh knight h6 this is another move which everybody would should be actually afraid of. Uh, the thing is, g takes on h6, of course, is losing immediately because the queen comes here with the check. Uh, and then after bishop h7, we're gonna have a checkmate. If uh, king f7, uh, we're gonna have queen f6. And this is, of course, the checkmate as the rook controls all of these squares here. So that's not possible. If king h8, it looks like uh, it's not enough to checkmate because the bishop controls... Uh, f7 so there is the mating pattern here uh which would not work there is no checkmate here but there is another checkmate here this is also the checkmate so that would simply not work uh but the move we have to find here so again alireza had only one move here and is bishop h5 making a space for the queen to control g8 otherwise we would have the checkmate so that is the that is another way of checkmate here uh, and now this knight probably would go to g4 and after exchanging white is fighting for a draw here 
uh, and it's extremely sharp position. Black has one extra rook, so whatever goes wrong, uh, then of course black is winning here. So queen g6 is the only way to continue here, to not lose by white now. Uh, and after queen h4, defending h7 from the checkmate, uh, and also attacking the rook, uh, white have to do another move with tempo, rook e5, with the idea of delivering the checkmate on g7, which doesn't look uh, dangerous. However, black doesn't have a time uh, to, for example, uh, move this bishop. The bishop is under attack, so bishop d7. The problem is rook h5, uh, of course, winning the, the queen. So queen h5, queen h5. And now after king g8, the problem is this bishop is lost as well. So, of course, white is winning with extra bishop, the bishop and the queen against two rooks of course white is completely winning here so that's the one of the options king g8 has to be played by by black and now after rook g5 uh, actually you can pause the video one more time and find the only not losing move for alireza firuzia again this position is just insane uh but but you can pause the video and find uh, not losing uh, move by by black while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time. So if you try to defend this pawn, it simply doesn't work. Uh, with the queen, obviously, it doesn't work because uh, this bishop is lost. And after whatever you're going to play, the queen going to come to e6. The bishop was important defender of e6. Uh, now the queen going to come here. And with the bishop uh, controlling h7, of course, we're going to have the checkmate in a couple of moves. Uh, probably something like rook e8 taking under control e6. Uh, but it's not enough because of the rook h5. Trapping the queen, queen h5, queen h5. And if you count the pieces again, we have extra bishop, okay? So this is very important to somehow save that bishop. So uh, not this way. If you try to defend this way, it also doesn't work. Or another rook doesn't really matter. The problem is the rooks are not connected. So we can win the rook uh, by delivering the check and making uh, the skewer here, okay? So for example, rook g4, again, uh, this bishop just disappeared. Uh, queen is under attack, queen can deliver some check, uh, but it doesn't really matter because now this rook gonna come to f4 uh, and deliver the checkmate, the queen together with the bishop gonna deliver the checkmate. If you try to defend, as I said, this rook is with no protection, so queen h7 and of course we're gonna win the rook and the game so that is the one option uh if we have rook f8 the um, protecting uh the f file this way and again we have queen h7 uh, and now queen g7 winning this this rook so it doesn't really matter king e8 uh and now even we can have bishop b5 first uh, instead of winning this rook uh, and then again come with the check and of course uh check my discount coming in a couple of moves as well. Uh, so that's another option. Uh, if queen e8, of course, uh, trying to exchange the queen is uh, doesn't work as well uh, because of the queen h7, king f8 and queen h8. And now the king has to get to the seven rank. So uh, king e7, now queen g7. And again, if the king is moved, then this rook is fall. If queen f7, then we're gonna have queen e5. And uh, then, yeah, this is game over. The rook is coming to the g7. Uh, and even you play something like uh, king, d king d8. So now this is not possible. Uh, but now we're going to have maneuver rook h4. And now the rook going to come to h8. Um, uh, deliver the check. The queen already control all of these squares. The bishop going to come also uh, without uh, without any problems here. And, and so on. So this is also completely lost position. So uh, after rook g5, the only not losing move for Alireza Firuzia again would be Queen G5. So immediately uh, just exchange for this rook and then move the bishop to e6. And now we have two rooks uh, for the queen, uh, the same amount of the pawns. But of course, black has uh, these two uh, passed pawns. However, the engine says it's completely a draw. It's just, you know, 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, but probably that would be uh, pretty much very, very interesting as there are a couple of, um, of ideas 
uh, how both of the sides can uh, can actually exploit th this position. Uh, probably that would be end with the draw, but that was the only option for Alireza Firuzia uh, to not lose that game. So King H8, this is what we have to find. And then after taking this pawn, Bishop H5. And this is the only way um, to actually not lose. So this is just amazing. Instead, Alireza went for Bishop F7, but this is the blunder. And I think you see that already, that the knight comes here with the check. So we have very similar position. It comes with the check and also with the attack on the bishop. So of course the king cannot be moved uh, because we're gonna have the check. The bishop still controls h7. Uh, so after taking the queen, it's not only, uh, you know, taking the queen, uh, if the king goes to f8, we're gonna have the checkmate. Uh, if not, we also gonna have a checkmate, so it doesn't really matter. G takes on h6, was forced, and now uh, after queen h6, uh, Alireza Firuzia has move. The checkmate is coming. This is, of course, pretty well known uh, pattern, mating pattern with the with the checkmate on h7 and then on f7. Uh, so this is why we have queen c7 trying to defend f7, but it doesn't work because after queen h7, king f8, queen h8, uh, bishop g8, queen h6, Alireza Firuzia resign. So he couldn't defend uh, these maneuvers of the of the queen. Just won the game. There is nothing he can do because the rook controls the e file. So the king can never escape uh, outside of of this position. And the bishop uh, with the queen uh, gonna control a lot of squares here. So for example, queen g7. What can happen here? Uh, simply queen d6. If the queen goes to e7, we gonna have the checkmate. If the kings move to the to the f7, we also gonna have the checkmate because of the bishop controlling g6 uh, and if we have king f7 immediately uh, then we're gonna have bishop g6 and there is only one move as this rook and the queen and the bishop controls all of the squares around so there is only one move and again there is only one move uh, where uh, Magnus Carlsen could deliver the checkmate with the pawn g4. So this is why after queen h6, Alireza Firuzia resigned. Uh, and I would like to also show you the score. So what just happened? We have a three winners in the first round. Nils Grandelius won against Alexander Donchenko. Uh, Anish Giri won against Ariantari. And this game was also quite amazing. Ariantari uh, sacrificed the piece uh, in the opening. He did exactly the same way how Magnus Carlsen played against Hikaru Nakamura. So uh, very nice performance preparation by Anish Giri was prepared, was aware uh, that this line exists and he definitely prepared. He just blocked um, all the pawns of uh, Ariantari and it's completely in completely blocked position. Uh, he found the way to activate his queen um, and he won um, at the end against Ariantari. If you haven't uh, seen this game where Magnus Carlsen plays against uh, Hikaru Nakamura, this was amazing game. Very, very beautiful. I show um, a lot of lines and ideas from that, that line uh, over there. Check the link over there. A very, very beautiful game. I really recommend that. Uh, and finally, of course, Magnus Carlsen won. So we have uh, three leaders, Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri and Nils Grandelius so far after a first round. And of course, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games from the Tata Steel Chess 2021, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.